You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. going on everybody welcome back to another episode of independent waters i am your host mikey man freddy and joining me as always is zach healthy man batista <laughs> zach how you doing my friend i'm doing good i am mentally preparing my body and soul for the beating it's going to take from watching all the wrestling this weekend yes of course this weekend coming up is the collective weekend uh gcw presents the collective in uh what is it dallas this year i believe so yes uh, and there is a lot of wrestling that we are that we are going to be covering, uh, and we have to get ready to watch all that and mentally prepare and physically prepare our bodies for that uh, endurance. Uh, that, that's that, that marathon we're going to be going on this yeah. weekend. Damn you, collective, and uh, making your fucking show cracked this year. It's all so good, and we're having very much trouble trying to pick what shows we want to watch and review. It... But we promise you, we promise you, fans, we will bring you something. Uh, It'll probably be another two-parter since we're reviewing a lot of shows. It's um, oh god, it's literally the equivalent of like that Monty Pilot sketch. The guy's like, "Please, I couldn't have another bite." It's like it's just a thin wafer, sir. <laughs> just, that's just me and Mikey by the end of this. Just yeah, so much wrestling. Also, if you couldn't hear, uh, I am a little a little down to the dumps in terms of physical health today. Oh. I have I have a, a ru- I have a cold. I'm very stiffly. Uh, my throat feels kind of scratchy, so uh, yeah, I apologize for if my voice sounds weird uh, or if I'm stiffly and gross for the episode. But <laughs> like I said, we will be bringing you uh, it. Well, the collective the the collective episodes start next week. This week we have a few more matches for you guys uh, to check out. Zach, do you want to tell the people? I believe you picked the majority of the matches. Actually, we both picked one. We did. So, Zach, do you want to tell the people what matches we we all brought to the table this week? So, I decided to go obscure and find a match for wrestler I saw on AEW Dark. I think it was when I picked it the week before. And I found Selena De La Renta versus Amber Nova from SWE Fury Wrestling. Nice, nice. Uh, and I brought to the table a Lee Moriarty taking on Alex Shelley from Absolute Intense Wrestling. And of course, our last match of the day was suggested by none other than the the man we interviewed last week on this show, Marty Snow. The bastard himself gave us a match that we should watch, and that match is Kyle O'Reilly versus Mike Bailey uh, from the WCPW or slash Defiant Wrestling uh, World Cup 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm very excited to get into these matches. Why don't we kick it right off? Because I don't know how much more I don't know how much energy I'll have for the rest of this episode. All right, hop on my black, Mikey, as I as my pumped up coffee driven energy goes forward. We're gonna start with the shortest matches of these because the match suggested to us was close to 30 minutes long. So we're gonna start with as the if, eight minute one. Yes, yeah, so it was a very long matchup. Uh, yeah, let's start off. What well, we're gonna be starting off with Selena De La Renta versus Amber Nova. Okay. SWE Fury. So these two start off with a very simple, basic uh, collar double tie up uh, with Selena getting the upper hand by pushing Amber to the floor with a wrist lock. And Amber uses her long legs to get out of it by wrapping them around Selena's head. Selena then breaks the hold, uh, but then she's put in a side headlock by Amber when they both get to their feet. And then Amber thinks this is able to take her to the ground, but quickly Selena escapes and turning the hold by turning the hold into an unsuccessful pin. Get a bit more back and forth here, and then Selena ends up behind Amber. She grabs both of her hands and pulls them, like, kind of towards her through her legs. So much so that when, like, she pulls them in, Amber flips. And normally for this spot, they land on their back. But instead, uh, Amber actually lands on her feet. 
And yeah, then, there, was some, there were some good reversals during this, I yes, think. Yes, there were like three spots I remember for this match that I was like, oh, okay, that was actually a pretty nice little twist on a normal spot that I yeah. actually quite enjoyed. This was the first one. She lands on her feet, code breaker Selena. She's now in control. She beats down Amber for a bit. She tries to crank on her neck uh, while she... she- Seat, I almost said sheet. It's seated on the floor. <laughs> uh, tries to turn into the pin, and once again, it's just uh, unsuccessful. Amber's then locked in an Indian death lock by Selena, and even though Amber is able to shove her off, Selena once again takes control by slamming her face into one of the turnbuckles. And with her now in the corner, Selena rams her shoulder into Amber's gut several times for grinding her face across the ropes, as a heels usually do. Yeah, in this match, uh, Selena was basically in control for, like, the first... For, like, basically all of it. Yeah, like, Amber got her little bit in the beginning, and then, like, the entire middle is just, like, her grinding the shit out of out of uh, Nova. Yeah, just just wearing her down, doing a lot of heel, heel stuff, submission holds, rubbing her face on the rope. Yeah. Uh, you know, choking her out, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's, uh... Let me see. Let me make sure I got... Yeah. Uh... During this point of the match, is actually a cool moment where uh, Selena gets Amber in like a modified abdominal stretch, where like she gets the normal version of this hold in, but she grabs one of Amber's legs and pulls back two. I was actually, I was like, oh, all right, that's a cool version of the uh, abdominal stretch. Never seen that before. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, impressed, a little bit impressed uh, for the creativity more than anything. And eventually, yeah. Amber gets out. It's like she elbows Selena's knee. Hip tosses her to the mat. The two then are exhausted. Amber's in one corner. Selena's on the uh, mat. And to her credit, Selena tries to cannonball Amber when she gets up, and Amber side like just walks away. So Selena flies into the corner, hits nothing, is stunned. Amber recovers in another corner. Selena tries again. Amber back doubles her this time, locks her legs around Selena's head. And then, like, how do I describe this? She, like, falls backwards and throws Selena... In face first into the top turnbuckle. It's actually quite cool. Yeah. Like, if this was a little bit more polished and a little bit more fluid, like, this could be a really fucking cool spot. Like, it's kind of like an inverse of when, like, Thunder Rosa does her double knees from the top to the bottom. You know what I mean? Yes. It could be really it's, cool. It, yeah, I, I see I see what you mean by that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So now Amber's in control, goes out of the corner, spin kicks Selena to the ground, uh, falls up with a drop kick and a running knee in the corner... Selena tries to get a last dish effort against uh, Amber, but and she blocks her from doing a Northern Light suplex. But in response, Amber forearms her in the chest over and over again until the two separate. When they yeah. reconvene, hmm? getting some separation in there. Finally, after uh, the two of them were going at it pretty hard here, or at least Amber was going at Selena. Yep. They reconvene, and Selena's taken to the mat by Hurricane Rana. And then on the floor, Selena crawls to the apron and grabs a wrench from the outside. <laughs> Yeah, which the ref blatantly sees. And <laughs> yep, it was that did not even try to hide it at all. Like, I would be like, "What the fuck? Why are we doing that?" Okay, and then in the highlight of the match, Selena has got this wrench in her hand. The ref's like, "No, give me that." And you'd expect her to like, you know, like maybe like give it the ref the wrench and like try to do a cheap shot, Amber. Like maybe, maybe like she like quickly spins around and like the weapon gets turned on her. But instead. She accidentally rams the wrench into the ref's gut and takes him down. Doesn't yep. DQ her. <laughs> For some reason. Yeah, I... I, I love who knows? Referee discretion, but there's no discretion when the referee is, uh, down, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how the ref's like, she's like apologizing to the ref. And Amber's like, well, I see a golden opportunity here. And she grabs the wrench that's still, like, in both her hands. Like, puts it across her throat and neck breakers her with it. And wins the match. Just like, she like kicks the wrench just, just out of the rest point of view. Mm-hmm. And she wins. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this ending, this ending was weird. I, like, I feel like it should have been more. I feel like there should have been, like, I feel like the ending should have been, like, oh, she gets the wrench and the, and, like, maybe the ref does see, but I think she should have still tried to go at Nova, and then Nova could have done some cool thing where she, like, kicks the wrench out of her hand and then mm-hmm. puts her finisher in, you yeah. know? Instead of it just being like, oh, Nova wins by accident. And the ref Yay. didn't be cure when he right? got like, it. Felt, it felt so blah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if it matters, but, like, this match is apparently a custom match, and I've only heard of this one singular other time, 
And quote me if I might be wrong here on this, but like I believe in Mikey back in the days of our old independent waters, like first couple episodes, we looked at I think it was Mission Pro Wrestling and they had an option for a custom match. It we wasn't could, Mission. It was another I think it was another was it? it might have been no, it might have been Mission, you're right. But yeah, there are some there are some promotions that do the option for mm-hmm. like if if you pay, you can make any two you can get any two superstars to have a match in their promotion, which is kinda cool. Yeah, and I remember one of the things I think you could choose was the finish of the match. So my theory here is this person just told them like it's just going to be like a, a weapon spot or something like that, which is why this just kind of felt like a, yeah, we have a wrench now. Yeah. Hey. Basically. And, uh, yeah, that's the match. Uh, this match was not great, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it was like, there was good basics and, like, good fun. And, like, it was, like, well, I think it was well wrestled. It was just boring. <laughs> like, it was very, I hate to say it, but it was very bog standard. Like, it was like your just basic wrestling match. Some of those spots weren't as well executed as I would have liked or hoped. Yeah. And outside of those three like spots that Mikey and I or I pointed out while I was uh, running through the match, nothing else really like stood out for me. Like I didn't get like a really like I didn't really like wasn't grasped by the character of these two. But granted, it was only an eight minute match, so yeah. You gotta be again. I, like I, I'm in the camp of I don't think it was boring. I don't think it was bad. It was just boring. Is yeah. what I meant to say. What would you give it, Mikey? Uh, I'm gonna give it a miss out. I don't think there's anything. Uh, I don't. I don't think anybody like. If you're a wrestling fan and you like really want to get into indie wrestling, this is not where to go. Uh, it just kind of felt rushed and uh, not rushed, I guess, because it was kind of slow paced. But it, like I said, it felt very basic wrestling. Like it felt like it wasn't. I don't know. There was just nothing exciting about it. I yeah. Guess. It. I. Some rest of the matches leave me with more to be desired. This one, I was just like, I, I needed a pop somewhere in there to really. I was like, like maybe I was like, yeah, maybe it was the no fans, or maybe it was the one announcer who was just like, kind of bland the whole time. But I don't know. It just felt so like this match kind of just felt so. I need some spice to this blah. match. Yeah, there was no person. It felt like there was no personality. You know, it just felt like, oh, there is generic heel and generic face, and that is it. And like, there was no like the the wrestlers didn't show any of their own personalities. You know. Like, Amber Nova just yelled, Nova Drive, a lot. And, like, sure, yeah. do that. But, like, I don't know. That's not, like, a character. It's, just, it's uh, you know, there was nothing. Again, there was just nothing. It just felt like there was, it felt very soulless, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. But, like I said, it was, it was good, good, like, fundamentals and good, like, it was just, it was solid wrestling. It was just not an exciting match. Yeah. Yeah, that's about, that's, that, I mean, like, yeah, you pretty much hit the nail on the head for me. So, why don't we move on to the next one, then? Uh, yeah. Next one, we got Alex Shelley taking on Lee Moriarty from All Absolute Intense Wrestling, AIW. Zach, what do we think about this one? I actually was really impressed with this match. I also very much like this match. Lee Moriarty and Alex Shelley uh, put on one hell of a fight. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very well documented on here. We love Lee Moriarty here. Man is fucking fantastic. Will be a star one day, guarantee. Alex yeah. Shelley is one of those guys that, like, whenever I hear him on the independent scene, he always has, like, just low-key banger matches. Like, he always has quality matches on the independent scenes whenever I hear about him. Always. Yeah. And this match... I feel like, to, to me, Alex Shelley kind of has the same feeling as Mercedes Martinez, almost. Mm. Where it's like, oh, damn, indie wrestling vet, and if they lose, the person who beat them is going over, right? Yeah, it feels like a it feels like a very uh like a signpost victory for an up and coming superstar. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like, like 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 if you know like if a, a up and coming women's wrestler beat Mercedes Martinez like like that. Yeah. It, I already said the comparison, but like you get it. You get established I mean. name being an established name gives you clout. Yes, exactly. He's got he's got enough clout to where I'm I, like whenever I'm like ooh and, like ever whenever I hear Alex Shelley in the match, I know the match is always going to feel important. Yeah. He does a good job of that, so um, let's get into the match itself then, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, we got a nice little face-off between these two, and uh, there is, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, divided crowd cheers among them. They're half this crowd really likes Shelly, half this crowd really likes Moriarty. So, it's anyone's game at this point, as far as the crowd's concerned. We go back and forth, some grapples here, Lee comes on top with a wrist lock, then Shelly walks them both uh, into a corner back first, In the moment that he forces the break... He gets a cheap shot in on Lee with a full, with in the form of a back elbow to the face. 
Uh, and then he tries to follow it up with an Irish whip, but Lee counters it with one of his own. And <laughs> unfortunately for Lee here, though, Shelly just kind of, he just runs circles around him. Like, he, like, just keeps, like, dodging, ducking him, like, countering his moves. Like, Lee cannot get a good grip on him. And then right when you think he's, like, he might get something, uh, he rolls Lee up, but Lee, of course, kicks out. And, like, right when he starts to fight back after this, uh, <laughs> with a boot to the gut, Shelly absolutely wrecks him with a jumping back heel kick to the face. And Moriarty is reeling at this point from that hit. So Shelly beats him around the ring with his... Head and face taking a lot of, like, the brunt of this, pretty much. But despite this, Lee is able to halt Shelly's offense. Well, thanks to an uppercut to the left arm. He then hit, tossed him across the ring with a massive, like, Lucha-esque arm drag off the top, or off the ropes. Better way of putting it. And as Shelly is, like, get, gets up, he sweeps out both of Shelly's legs. Punt kicks his left arm, uh, which would then become the target of Lee for pretty much the rest of this match, that left arm. Here, though, is where uh, we get to see Shelly's veteranship and heelishness come into play because Lee goes to dropkick him and he moves out of the way. He blows snot onto Lee while he's on the ground. Fucking disgusting. Uh, and then he goes to run the ropes. Uh, but Lee, determined to, like, win this match, just drop kicks him in the face on the rebound, knocks him out of the ring. Didn't let that get the... Didn't let uh, Shelly's heelishness... Uh, what's the word? Uh, oh, fucking hell. I'm trying to... Discourage him. There's the word. So then Lee drives him into the metal crowd barricade with a low suicide dive between the bottom and middle rope before getting him back into the ring. Here, Lee try, uh, tries to continue attacking Shelly's left arm, but when he goes to running splash from the corner, Shelly moves out onto the apron, so Lee hits nothing but turnbuckle. And from the apron, uh, Shelly goes to the top, and while Lee is able to briefly stop him with a leaping European uppercut, Shelly stops him with a stiff-sounding palm strike to the ribs. This shit echoed. Fucking hurt. And despite this, Lee still fights back to, um, and starts to do some joint manipulation on the top rope with Shelly's left arm. Like, he, like, grabs his fingers, like, yanks them backwards, puts his hand in kind of like a key lock sort of hold. So to get out of this, Shelly hits Lee with a massive atomic drop off the top rope, surprisingly. Now, I don't know about how you feel, Mikey, about the uh, atomic drop, but um, I'm always the, torn. The, uh, the, the super atomic drop was really good. It... Atomic drops normally don't. I never atomic drops. I always see them, and I'm like, I never really buy it. But this one, I was like, damn. I mean, I I kind of buy it because it's like, I mean, you're, I mean, I, I no, mean, how like, do you um, not buy it? How do you, how how do do you not it? buy it as a as a dude? How do you not buy it? It's more so like, like it's just, when it's, it's someone executed? dropping you, dropping you on their your nuts on their knee, like that hurts. <laughs> you're saying out loud, like this. <laughs> no, it's more so like whenever they do it, like it's very clear that like they stop, like or just for like it's like you could tell where they stop, but for here, I could not tell where they stopped it. Because yeah. they just bounced off the fucking canvas. And a top, can we just talk about how an atomic drop is basically just like a legal low blow? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like when Jeff Hardy does the uh, the split legged uh, leg drop yeah, right, right across the ring. <laughs> it's like, it's, bro, <laughs> like it's just it's just a perfectly legal uh, low blow. That's fine. That's it. Literally perfectly legal. Nothing wrong at all about it at all. Definitely, totally. <laughs> so then these two uh, trade grapples with each other until Shelly decides that he's had enough of this shit. And he drives Lee into the mat with a swinging fisherman neckbreaker, which causes him to roll to the outside. Here, Shelly lambasts Lee with chops to the chest while, like, just pinging him back and forth off these two crowd barricades between each chop. And, like, unfortunately for Lee here, when he's, like, just about to mount a comeback against Shelly, Shelly just grabs him and flatlines him face first into one of the barricades. Shh, fucking looked brutal. And Shelly at this point, like, he gets to the ring, he's like, alright, I'm gonna sit here. I'm gonna get a count of victory. I don't need to fucking go out there. Mm -hmm. and, and then he's like, you know what? No. Fuck this kid. I'm gonna beat this kid's ass. So he goes <laughs> out, grabs Lee, gets him back into the ring, goes to the top rope, see, uh, like, kind of does, like, the Eminem, like, picture thing with his hands look with, uh, from the top, hits Lee with a diving crossbody. Yeah, which was, uh, great. Mm -hmm. Very well executed. And afterwards, uh, he locks Lee in a side headlock and tries to keep him down. But stubbornly, Lee, like the young lion or tiger, if you must, if you will, uh, fights back to his feet and just unloads a metric fuck ton of forearms into Shelly's face. Like, it's Jesus Christ. And at this point, the match starts to devolve into like a striking competition. Lee comes out on top of this, thanks to a combination of palm strikes, a kick to the leg, and a spinning roundhouse kick to the chest. 
He then goes for a mm. suplex, and while Shelly blocks it, Lee gets up and locks his left arm with one leg and kicks with the other leg. It's classic Lee Moriarty offense, if you've seen it. Yes. Momentum on his side. Lots of, he... lots of, lots of heavy strikes. Mm-hmm. He tries to then lock Shelly in a waist lock, but Shelly runs him, runs into the ropes, barely clings on, forces Lee to let go. Relentlessly, though, instead of going for it again, Lee runs at Shelly, and <laughs> he goes around him and uses the ropes that Shelly's hanging on to to 619 him in the chest, and then from the apron, use the uh, ropes to crossbody him as he sits up from the ground. I actually really fucking like this spot. Yeah, it was a very, it was very creative. Mm-hmm. Something I haven't really seen before. Yeah. Uh, so this, at this point, recently, Shelly's like, fuck this, I'm going to the outside, I, I need to, I need a moment, and Lee gets up on the apron, then running pump kicks him in the chest, rolls him back to the ring, uh, he goes to the top rope, tries to double stomp Shelly, but Shelly get moves out of the way, so Lee, like Shelly before, honestly just runs circles around him, just completely cannot get his hands on Moriarty, until, uh, Lee gets the opportunity to hit him with a variation of a spinning, I have this written down here because I, this is the only way I can describe this, a spinning double underhook suplex, or Falcon Arrow, maybe? It, it looked like a Falcon Arrow. I wanted to call it a Falcon I, Arrow. I, I, like, I, I was like, I called it a Falcon Arrow in my notes. I, want, I was like, I'm like, I want to call it a Falcon Arrow, but at the same time, like, <laughs> is it really a Falcon Arrow if they don't go up, like, in a suplex and down to the floor? Yeah, I guess, but still. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I think, I think it was close enough to a Falcon Arrow. Mm-hmm. We'll go with Falcon Arrow for now. It's easier. <laughs> So as you expect, the two are exhausted after this. So they each recover in opposite corners. And while Lee's the first one to get up and go charge at Shelly, not only does Shelly boot him in the face several times, when he goes for a running splash, Shelly moves out of the way and insecurities him with the back of the head. And he goes for a tornado DDT here, but Lee blocks it and hits him with one of his own before covering him. And when Shelly kicks out, Lee instantly grabs his left arm and locks in a Fujiwara armbar. Now hoping that his work on the left arm is going to pay dividends. And so Shelly escapes the broke break. He then tries to hit Lee with a slice bread number two, but Lee blocks it, Inziguri Shelly in the side of the face, and then double stomps his left arm from the top rope as Shelly is leaning on the ropes to uh, stand up. Then hits Shelly with a tilt world face buster that he converts into another Fujiwara armbar on Shelly's left arm. And while Shelly does slip out of the hole, when he Irish lit whips Lee, wow, that was a fucking tongue twister for a second. Irish whips Lee, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. He uh, then gets hit with the exact same <laughs> tilt to world face buster into Fujiwara armbar combo in the dead center of the ring from Lee. <laughs> I respect Moriarty being like, you know what? It worked once. It'll work again. Yeah, fuck it, right? Fuck it. What is he going to do? Counter it? <laughs> <laughs> so Shelly What this- do you do? Learn from the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Shelly at this point is desperately crawling to the bottom rope. And he does get the rope break thanks to his foot being on the bottom rope. But at the end of the roast now, Lee is like, all right, I'm just going to lock his left arm in like a wrist lock. But every time he tries to like do something to Shelly, Shelly forearms him in the face. Just try to get him to let go of his wrist, but he won't. Until finally Lee goes, F you, and he tries to do it again. But this time Shelly's like, all right, you're going to learn today then. And he just forearms him in the face over and over again until he knocks him back into the corner and then arm drags him across the ring. He then goes after Lee, but gets spinning pump kick twice in the face, and then a normal pump kick for a third time by Lee. And then he gets spiked into the mat with a elevated DDT. Lee is the match one seemingly at this point, but Shelly somehow gets his foot on the bottom rope here. I have no idea how. Like he even got like the foot like farther away from the rope, so you can see his foot cross. And I was just like, shit, uh-huh. must be fucking tired if he, the the closer one was that fucking just gassed. At this point, Lee's got nothing left. Like he's done pretty much everything in his arsenal. So he's like, all right. Time for the top rope. Over reliable. I'll either win or I'll lose here. This is true. Uh, and then as he goes up there to do something, Shelly starts to fight back. And he, oddly enough, he turns his back on Lee. And, like, he bites his head to make sure Lee stays there. And at this point, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And he puts his foot onto the turnbuckle and backflips and fucking slice bread number two's Lee off the top rope. And despite this, Lee fucking kicks out. Yeah, I was genuinely Lee, surprised. Lee he, does not give. Lee is not giving in so easily this fight. Genuinely shocked. Lee kicked, kicked out here. I thought he was fucking done. Yeah, and Shelly's like, "All right, fuck it." Air raid crashes him. Lee kicks out again. <laughs> He's like, "Fuck." All right, well, here we go. And he goes to the top corner. He starts to stomp his foot into the ground. It sets up for sweet chin music, basically. Lee turns around. He's too tired at this point. Eats the super kick to the face. Gets hit with a re- swinging reverse sto that Shelly calls the shell shock. 
Goes to pin Lee. One, two. Lee kicks out again and fed up. And, like, Shelly doesn't even give Lee a moment to rest here. He just grabs his arms around his neck, locks in a, like, a chicken wing over the shoulder crossface that he calls the Border City Stretch, and Lee taps. That, that, yeah. That's too much. That's, man's just got, like, hit with three signatures and, like, a finisher. The fact that he even kicked out was a fucking miracle, to be honest. Yeah, it was wild. Uh, great, great match, though, from these two. Mm-hmm. It was really fun to watch, and, re- like, I really enjoyed the pacing of this match. Like, mm-hmm. me as well. Started out slow, got faster, and by the end of this match when it happened, I was like, that felt like a good conclusion. I was satisfied yeah, it- with that. It also didn't feel like there was a lot of lulls in the action. It felt like there was some where they went to the outside, but then it didn't last very long, and they were able to, like, keep... Like, they were able to keep the momentum of the match throughout the whole match, which was... Mm-hmm. Agreed. It felt it felt good, and it made the match feel like it flowed way better. Um, and these two just had really good chemistry together. They worked really well together. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of, They did really creative spots, um, and I think a, a lot of things went really smoothly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just turned out to be a super sick match between these two. Mm-hmm. That being said, I really liked it. It didn't hit the mark out range for me, but it was close. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm with you there. Like I was like by the end, I was like, God damn, that was a great ending sequence. But when I finished it, I was like, It's a good match. I'm, I'm like, I can yeah. feel the mark out like just sitting I there like in the off, background. But it was good. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna go with the high man. Very close, but it's a yes. high man. Okay, alright folks, get your fuck, get your asses ready, we're going for the heavy hitter yeah. now. Yeah, alright, we got, so, those two, those two were relatively quick reviews, yep. but now we have, to, now we are jumping into Mike Bailey versus Kyle O'Reilly from the What Culture Pro Wrestling slash Defiant Wrestling Pro Wrestling World Cup 2017, recommended to us by none other than the bastard of PWL, Marty Snow. Side note, uh, shout out to Mike Bailey for his recovery after this weekend because the man is like all over the collective in so many shows that he's going to be probably hurting for a while after this weekend. Yeah, take a after. Hey, Mike Bailey, after this weekend, take a break. Yeah, there's Relax. always like one weekend warrior that's like, I'm gonna be in every fucking show, and this year it's Mike Bailey. Like, relax, you'll be all right. Just, just take a take a take a little bit, take a little time off for yourself. You gotta, you gotta let that body heal. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do this. But yeah, so if you, uh, real quick before we get into this match, I just want to say a big thank you to Marty Snow for rec- recommending us this match on our interview with him last week. If you're interested in going to check that out, uh, you could you could head over to our uh, our Spotify, anywhere you can find podcasts and download that episode and hear an awesome interview with Marty Snow. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay, let's get to the match he suggested us, which was, like I said, Kyle O'Reilly, Mike Bailey. What did, what did you think of this one? Fantastic. Agreed. This One. was. I, I think. I think we both kind of knew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I, think, I think we saw. We saw the two people in this match, and we both kind of had the feeling of like, yeah, this is gonna be good, right? When Marty like, told us this match. I was like, good, fuck right? yes. I was like, fuck yes, thank you. And I saw the match length, and I was like, that's gonna be really long, but it's still probably gonna be really good. If it's a bad match, there is something truly cursed about this match, and if that somehow becomes a bad match, but it was not. Thank God. It right. was not. It was very good. There was a was, brief. Uh, there's awesome. some brief uh, backstory notes about this match because it actually plays into the match itself. Yes, please. So this match is, as Mikey said, it's uh, it's from. Uh, this is part of the Pro Wrestling World Cup. This is the Canada bracket. This is the in its second round specifically. Winner goes on to the finals to fight. I believe it's the American brackets winner, but I might be or the British might be the English brackets winner. I, I can't remember which one, but they were brackets for this. So going into this match is that these going into this match these the story was that these two had a very rough opening round. Kyle's left leg is really fucking hurt, and Bailey is basically kind of gassed after his match. Mm-hmm. Like he really pushed himself to win his opening match. So basically, it's implied this is going to be a battle of endurance here. Which one will give up first, Bailey's cardio or O'Reilly's leg? Yes. And for the first two-ish minutes, it, this very much these two testing the waters. A lot of kicks, a lot of holds, just trying to figure out like their plan of attack. And eventually, like, Bailey, like, spinning roundhouse kicks Kyle in his left leg. And immediately, Kyle goes to the outside. He's, like, resting his leg up. And, like, you can probably see the gears turning in, like, Bailey's head of, like, all right, there it is. Yeah. That's, uh, that's Kyle, the I mean, armor. I mean, Kyle limped his way to the ring, so I'm pretty sure Bailey knew the chick in the armor right off the bat. Mm-hmm. I actually really liked how commentators built this up for Mike Bailey because they basically were like, Kyle O'Reilly would probably beat him very, like, would, would probably win this match. But now he's hurt. 
So Bailey has a pretty good might have a shot of winning. Like really building up Bailey here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which will come into play later. So uh, Riley, Riley of course gets back into the ring, takes Bailey to the ground, which causes the two to go back and forth exchanging holes. But Bailey, while he is able to go like kind of toe to toe with Kyle, it's very clear that Kyle has the upper hand. Like in this air, like expertise of wrestling, like this is his yes. world. Which I liked, because it basically was in the implication of, if Bailey can strike Kyle from a distance, he's money. He'll be fine. But if he gets, if he fights Kyle in a ground game, he's going to lose it bad. Yeah, if he, if he gets caught, Kyle's got the upper hand. So, after a bit of this, the two separate, go right back at it again. This time, Bailey gets the upper hand with a few kicks to Kyle's injured legs. And as a result, he front face locks Kyle Riley, takes him to the floor. But as we just said, this is Kyle's world. So he immediately takes control, uh, counters this into a heel hook that forces Bailey to grab the bottom rope. As fast as he possibly can, basically. And I like how this it, this prior experience he had seemed to have humbled Bailey a bit because for the rest of the match, Bailey is like Spider Man when it comes to these ropes. Like the moment Kyle grabs him and he knows he's about to get put in a hold, it like goes up. He's like, "Find rope now, get to rope immediately." And I love this because it builds up the dangerousness of Kyle a lot without doing a lot at the same time. All right. So, after they separate, Bailey gets up normally, but I actually like how after this, too, Kyle is basically sitting in the corner to avoid yeah, standing he, on his injured leg. Like, yeah, I mean, just, you know, taking, taking some time to breathe. Mm-hmm. This match is filled with, like, little details like this that I was like, oh, damn, that's some really good in-work psychology. Like, shit. So, the moment they start to fight again, they start scrapping with kicks. This is, I was ready for this. I was like, please have them kick the shit out of each other. The moment that Bailey gets too close to Kyle, though... He gets dumped on his back, nearly locked into an armbar. Bailey throws himself into the ropes to get away from this. The two separate again. And once they lock up again, surprisingly, Bailey locks O'Reilly in a deep side headlock that he gets that he holds on to him for a lot longer than I initially expected. And yes. O'Reilly has to uh, stubbornly get out of this by elbowing his back and then Irish whipping him into the ropes. But when he tries to leap when he like leapfrogs over Bailey's, Bailey like runs towards him. He ends up tweaking his leg when he lands, which gives Bailey just enough time to get back into this match, and boy, does he take the chance, because the Irish whips Kyle O'Reilly, springboard backflips into him, and as O'Reilly moves out of the way and tries to kick him, Bailey catches his injured leg, and Dragon Screw leg whips him. Yeah, that that's when you know, like, ooh, ba- like, that's what I, it gave me the feeling of, like, ooh, he got him. Yeah, dude, the Dragon Screw leg sweep, or leg whip, is just, that shit always looks so painful. It's such, like, a basic move, but it looks like it hurts so bad. It literally looks like you're trying to pull your opponent's kneecap out of its socket, and it's disgusting, and I love it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, after... It's, it's rough. Yeah, and as, like you said, this is where Bailey kind of gets his, like, he ruthlessly targets his left leg. Strikes, holds, he just keeps Kyle on the ground. Like, he's like, you ain't ever fucking standing up or hitting or grabbing me ever again. Yes. I, like, loved that the pier where, like, Bailey had Kyle's legs tied up because every time Kyle, like, tried to sit up to stop Bailey from getting his leg in this hold, Bailey just, like, chopped him back the chest up, like, sit the fuck down. Yeah. Don't stay, get up. Stay. Stay. Mm-hmm. The two, though, do get up eventually because O'Reilly's able to actually get him to let go. And he responds to a kick from Bailey with two meaty forearms to Bailey. Oh, yeah. So Bailey's... Really coming in hard with the... Like, these two... Sh- these two have such a good striking game mm-hmm. and all of their all of their like strikes that they throw look awesome yeah i expected nothing less than these two and i was i got exactly what i was hoping for yeah so bailey yeah, shows him into the ropes good. after this and he machine gun kicks kyle in the chest for 13 seconds straight which was wild like every time i thought he was about to stop he just kind of kept going mm, i was like I don't even think if I normally tried to kick for 13 seconds of hitting, let alone a person, I could do that for 13 seconds straight. I think my legs would cramp up on me. Yeah, right? So, uh, when Bailey does, uh, so after this barrage, Kyle catches one of Bailey's legs finally, and he slaps him, like, just right across the face. (laughs) And Bailey's like, okay, well, I'll just kick you with one of my, like, you know, my try and true kicks. But O'Reilly catches it, locks his hands around like together around said leg and he sends Bailey crashing into the mat with a modified overhead belly to belly suplex. Yeah, don't fuck with Kyle O'Reilly. Nope. Uh you use the it was like uh when you're in a wrestling game, you spam a move over and over to the point your opponent's like he just knows how to counter it like every time you try to do it now. Mm-hmm. So O'Reilly's back in control after this and he goes after Bailey, who's desperately clutching the bottom rope for safety. Like this man 
it's like he insulted his parent, and the parent's about to try to punish him, and he's hiding behind another adult for safety, basically. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't really matter, though, because, like, once the ref, like, gives, like, you know, he's, like, give him some space, like, okay. Actually, his ref is actually, my bad. Doesn't even matter, though, because when he walks over to Bailey, he fucking kicks him in the arm, and he lets go, so he grabs him and picks him up. Despite his obviously mm-hmm. injured knee, though, O'Reilly knees Bailey in the chest several times, Irish whips him, and then he just kitchen sinks him before going to the mat and wrapping his legs around Bailey's waist. And this whole time, Kyle is really trying for that arm bar. Which he, yeah. as I learned, is, is called Arm Mageddon. Fucking <laughs> love your fun game. Very good. Very good. Uh, and Bailey is just going for the bottom rope over and over. And he, fi- and he does get this because, of course, he always seems to position himself like at the perfect spot where he can get to this rope with just enough time before the armbar gets put in. Yeah, Mike Bailey has uh, an amazing sense of ring awareness. Yeah, like, the moment, like, he got taken down by O'Reilly that one time, he was just like, I will never not be away from these ropes if I can't avoid it. Yeah. It's not over yet for Bailey, though, because even though he did get to the bottom rope, uh, when he has his back to Kyle in the corner, Kyle walks up to him and stiffly kicks him in the back twice before hoisting him up and hitting him with a shin breaker by slamming Bailey's shin into his knee. I believe it was his right knee. Which which looked awful. We then get to the absolutely disgusting looking spot. So Kyle O'Reilly looks like he's going to go for a figure four leg lock. Like he's got Bailey's one leg crossed over his other leg. And you're like, oh, you're just going to like lock your legs in and sit down, right? No. Nope. F- fucking Kyle instead, ra- and he steps over Bailey's like leg that's horizontal. And just takes his long leg and slams it forward into the mat. So that the uh, that leg rams into the straightened leg. And it looked fucking horrible. So, I just like what some when he was setting this up, someone in the crowd yelled, Woo! And he just like shook his head like, no, that's not what I'm doing. No, God ver- And then he fucking and then he fucking broke Mike Bailey's legs. Jesus fuck, dude. <laughs> it was so horrible that both the commentators, not, the heel and face, who have been like arguing the whole match, both went wow at the same time, like, oh god. Wow shit. Yeah. Oh. It was rough looking. Honestly, if Pento Scudo had that as a finisher where he broke someone's leg, I'd believe it. I'd believe it. 100%. That shit looked disgusting. Yep. So, of course, following this up, Kyle at this point is in no fucks given about Bailey's mood. Uh, and he smashes his knee into Kyle. <laughs> he picks Bailey up and smashes his knee into uh, into Bailey's knee before hitting with a backbreaker that he smoothly transitions into a heel hook the moment Bailey hits the mat. Which is fucking awesome. Bailey did a really good job of selling this. Like, he's literally, like, just crawling towards this rope, and then it gets to the point where he realizes he's not going to get on the ropes, and he's like, fuck it, and he just stamps on O'Reilly's chest until he lets go. Unfortunately for him, though, O'Reilly stays control of this match, because at this point, it seems like Mike Bailey is gassed, and he cannot actually fight back against Kyle, so he starts to stamp. Uh, So Kyle stays control by stamping on the leg that he had been targeting all match for Bailey. And with Bailey now stopped again, O'Reilly slams his forearm into one of Bailey's triceps, and mm. he grabs the wrist of the arm he just hit. And credit to Bailey, he does try to get out of this forearming by get out of this by forearming O'Reilly in the face every time Kyle like tries to like twist his arm around in this wrist lock that he now has him in. But in the end, Kyle gets the best out of him by just honestly he's just, oh, he just powers right through it. Like he's like full power. Fuck yourself. I'm not gonna just. I'm not gonna flinch. And he. Yeah slams Bailey's shoulder first into the mat. And then, of course, yeah. Kyle, hoping that, like, okay, I've worked his arm, I've hurt his leg, so he can't kick me as well. I can now go for the arm bar, and he won't be able to get it. Goes to the arm bar, Bailey instantly gets his foot on the bottom rope before Kyle even gets the hold in now. like he... It's unbelievable that no matter where Mike Bailey is, he always seems to be able to get a rope break. Honestly, it really played out to the impressiveness of how Bailey came prepared for this. Like, he is not yeah. making, like, he's not making uncalculated risks. Like, he is making sure that when he falls, he is near something to save him. Yeah, he knows Kyle O'Reilly's gonna go for that submission, so he's like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not getting to, I'm not fighting in the middle of the ring. That's a death sentence. Yeah. But, uh, then Kyle makes, as we called on Independent Warriors several times, where I'm calling it now, the cardinal sin that you should never do in a wrestling match if you want to keep someone down. He mockingly kicks Mike Bailey in the fi- head and face. Oh, big mistake. Big fucking mistake, because all it's going to do is fire the guy out that you're doing it to. Never, never, never works out. And as a result, Bailey counters a back body drop into a sunset flip pin, uh, but O'Reilly then counters that with an arm bar. I forgot about that, my bad. 
Uh, but Bailey gets out of this by turning this into a pin. And when O'Reilly finally lets go, Bailey double knee backflips him on, uh, double knee backflips onto his chest. Classic Mike Bailey. Always looks good. Yep. Good old shooting star press Meteora. To go back to the opposite corners of the ring. From here, Bailey hits a running kick in the corner. O'Reilly then hits a running form in the corner in response. They go for, then goes for another wrist lock on Mike Bailey, but Bailey slips out of it. He then pump kicks O'Reilly in the chest. Uh, Bailey pump kicks O'Reilly in the chest. Goes for a spinning roundhouse kick once more and misses because O'Reilly ducks it. He then goes for it a second time. O'Reilly ducks it again. Third attempt, though. Bailey finally clips O'Reilly with the kick to the back or the side of his head. And following this, Kyle gets to his knees. And Bailey tries him with a huge kick or gets falls to his knees. And Bailey tries to kick him in the side of the head with a huge roundhouse kick. But again, Kyle catches it in midair and cinches in an STF for like the briefest of moments. Because when Bailey escapes this hold... Kyle knees him in the face several times. Then Bailey kicks him oh, in the yeah. chest. Goes to run the ropes. Kyle cuts him off with the kitchen sink. Bailey, when Bailey hits said ropes, Bailey then, or O'Reilly then goes for the arm bar again, or the arm specifically. Bailey goes for then a sleeper hold that O'Reilly counters into a fucking Saito suplex. And ju- Jesus fucking Christ, I'm out of breath after that. Yeah, there was a it was a long sequence with a lot of things that happened that I yeah. uh, commend you for, I commend you for doing so well. Thank you. I, I tried. I really did because when I finished writing that, I was like, my god, that was so long. That was such a sentence you just said. Yeah, and naturally, they're both off their feet at this point. It's like they're both down. Yeah. O'Reilly's the first to get up though, and he looks pissed. He's like, you yeah, little shit. Bailey will not give in. Mm-hmm. So he gets Bailey up to his feet. Bailey elbows him off him, and when we then get to see what I've been waiting for all match. These two go back and forth, kicking the shit out of each other. Oh, yeah. I, not, not not holding back even a little bit. I was so happy when I saw this. And then I love how this ended, because basically Kyle goes to kick with his left leg. Because he think, he's, like, he's like, okay, maybe I'll throw him off of it, but he can't, because it's too hurt. And he's got to stop. And when Bailey tries to take advantage of this with a kick, O'Reilly kicks, like, ba- you know, like when you kick, you have one foot still on the ground? Kyle just sweeps Bailey's foot on the ground out from underneath him. Yeah, which was a great, a great little like reversal. Like, yeah, get down. Yeah, like get the fuck down. And and the violence doesn't stop there though, because Kyle then axe kicks Bailey in the back of the head and discus forms him in the face. But then he is cut off by a back spin kick to the gut from Bailey and an axe kick to the back from him. Yep. Then Kyle kicks the back of Bailey's leg, slaps him in the back of the head, knees him in the face, and kicks him in the chest. But when he tries to sweep the legs of Bailey, Bailey hops over them and drives around his kick into the back of his head, which knocks them both down again. Yeah, these two are so tired at this point. Yeah. Bailey is the first to get up in one corner. Kyle gets up in the opposite. Bailey starts to go for a move, but as soon as Kyle and as soon as Kyle turns around, Bailey hits him with his signature triple spinning roundhouse kick to the side of the face. Thing of beauty, honestly. And then he tries to follow us up with a running corkscrew shooting star splash. Classic Bailey. But O'Reilly catches him instead and inst- nearly locks in a Kimura lock. <laughs> nearly. Nearly. But Bailey gets Bailey, out of this. Bailey, once again, not letting it happen. This time, though, oddly not using the ropes. He actually uh, grabbed, uh, I believe it was his own trunks, so that Kyle actually couldn't, like, pick his arm up and lock it in with his other hand around his wrist. Mm-hmm. And, like, the whole time while he has, like, this grip in, one of his legs just keeps kneeing O'Reilly in the face while he's got his head, like, close down to his gut. Because he keeps trying to lock this Kimura lock in by getting his hand off, but he can't. Uh Uh-huh. And as they do this, they get to their feet. But unfortunately for O'Reilly, not, or, Bailey, not only does O'Reilly not let go of him like he's hoping, O'Reilly responds by spiking Bailey with a brain buster in the dead center of the ring. Which looked brutal, Mm -hmm. by the way. Bailey kicks out of this. Uh, Kyle initially goes for the armbar again, and when it doesn't work, he locks in a mean-looking ankle lock on him. Like, this was fucking... Yeah, it's rough. This was shades of Kurt Angle, to be honest. And, and he holds it for a while. Yeah, that's the Kurt Angle part, because it's like Bailey sold his ass off. Like, he got, he's crawling to the ropes, desperately trying to get there. The moment he, like, goes to get to the ropes, Kyle transitions the ankle lock into, um... What is it, um... He transitions it into a grapevine hold... And I actually started thinking at this point, I'm like, oh my god, Bailey's gonna fucking tap, isn't he? Mm-hmm. It, but was, he... it was close. It definitely got close for me. I Barely. definitely thought that. I definitely thought that was gonna be the end because it was it, all the signs pointed to it, right? It was mm-hmm. like he he couldn't escape. He wouldn't let go. Bailey was actually nowhere near the ropes this time, which was like a first in this match. Yep. So it was like 
this might be it. You know, there was a, this was a very good false finish. Yep. But as the match dictated, Bailey, this though he didn't have the awareness of uh, the Spider Man awareness this time, he does actually get to the bottom rope. Yep. Drags himself there barely, but Kyle doesn't want to get out the hole, so he immediately tries to lock the ankle lock in again. Like the moment, like Bailey, like the rest, like all right, let go. He just grabs Bailey's leg again and tries to drag him out. Yep. But uh, instead, Bailey roll like responds. Which by, like, why don't more people do that when the rest like rope break and they go okay, let go, and then just grab him by the foot again and bring him back into the middle and put him back in the hold. It's rare, but it's very effective. <laughs> like what? They're not on the ropes anymore. They let go. Yeah, like I, I, I let go. You told me to. Mm-hmm. So, after this, uh, but Bailey, though, this time is prepared, because he's like, I'm not getting put in that old again. So he rolls forward and throws O'Reilly out of the ring. Bailey then, like, kind of slaps that leg that O'Reilly been working on awake. He then hits Kyle with a springboard moonsault from the second rope in the ring to the outside. Fucking Classic wild. Mike, as, as Michael Cole would say, vintage Mike Bailey. Man is too athletic for his own good. Yeah, man. So Bailey then gets Kyle back to the ring. He goes for his shooting star double knees to the back. He calls the ultimate weapon, but Kyle moves out of the way, and Bailey's e- knees eat nothing but fucking mat. Your knees are gone, sir. Ow. For the day. I don't know. Could you could you imagine just doing like a back like a shooting star press off of the top rope, and somebody being like, "All right, so what you're gonna do is that Kyle's gonna move, and you're just gonna land directly on your knees." I would look at them and be like, "You're fucking joking me, right? You better give me some like, fucking." Ow! You better give me some knee pads or something, man, bro. I mean, he, I mean, he definitely has knee pads. There's no way he doesn't have knee pads. Oh my god! If your if your finishing moves involves a knee, you need knee pads. Yeah, even so, that's still that fucking hurt. Yeah, the, could... the fact that he just landed just straight like on his knees from how high up he was was like, you know, you know what? Have you played Mario Odyssey yet? Uh, no. Oh uh, well, if you're in Mario Odyssey when you're Mario mm-hmm. and you like fall from some place really high. Mm-hmm. You don't take fall damage. Mario just, like, lands on the ground and, like, freezes, and then his whole body, like, shudders, and it goes all the way up. <laughs> that's exactly what I pictured when Mike Bailey's, like, knees hit the ground. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. He, he was in there for a while. and <laughs> Oh, man. So, uh, after this, and God did that, that fucking sucked. Kyle actually is able to get back to the match. They fight a bit. Kyle hoists him on the top rope now. They go back and forth, yep. jockey for control. Bailey then counters a superplex by simply holding onto the ropes when Kyle tries to jump off, so he just dumps him face first into the mat. <laughs> and just as Riley gets up, Bailey sees the opportunity, hits Kyle with the ultimate weapon, picks up the fucking win. Yeah, what a what a match this was. Holy moly. I have one word for this match. Quality. Yeah, these two killed each other. These two had fantastic ring work, fantastic chemistry. Their characters were good with the valiant up-and-comer going against the more veteran fighter, weakened fighter. The commentators were fucking great. I actually yeah. really appreciate them explaining stuff as well as like talking about each one's re- like mindset here. And the crowd was fucking white-hot for this match, which was yeah, fantastic. This whole, the whole... This match was just like chef's kiss. It was really... It was just had it all, right? Mm-hmm. It was re- It was just two really good wrestlers wrestling really good. Wrestling. And that is A-OK sometimes, you know? Mm-hmm. Wrestling the style like it, there. Uh, 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 sorry, you go. Uh, no, you're fine. Wrestling no, the style. I was, I was, I was just ge- geeking out, sorry. Yeah. No, no, geek, geek out more. Come on. Uh, it's just like, two, like you were, like you were, like you were gonna say, two wrestlers wrestling the style they're good at very well. Mm-hmm. And when and two and it's two styles that uh just happen to match up very well and they're able they were able to do a lot of creative spots, they're able to do a lot of cool submission holds. Mm-hmm. They're able to do a lot of cool stuff with false finishes and submissions. It made it look like Mike Bailey was like prepared for this match, you know? Like there was it, it just felt like so much went into this match and like it really paid off. Because this match was just very, very good. Mm-hmm. This is uh like every every aspect of this match just made sense. Yeah. Oh, this match is easily a mark out for me. Like that that's the yeah, easiest yeah, yeah, mark yeah, yeah, I've yeah, ever yeah, heard. Yeah. This match for is sure. a good example of a hidden gem in the independent wrestling because this this match on YouTube only has thirty four thousand views and has been up since March twenty or May twenty seventeen. This match deserves more views. Go watch it. So, Half of Redragon versus Mike Speedball Mike Bailey, one of the best in my opinion, one of the best professional wrestlers today. Oh, he's <laughs> so good. It's actually criminal how good he is. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh my like god. The, what, that, a, what a 
What a fucking wrestler, man. Yeah, what a fucking wrestler. What a fucking match. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Marty Snow. That was... <sighs> yeah. Thank you, Marty Snow, for that suggestion. We appreciate it. It was a sick match, and uh, we're going to keep trying to get hashtag Marty versus Speedball uh, trending on Twitter for you. Yeah, I already got the man's attention. It's already like... That, yeah. That, that's already more than I was, uh, more than I expect. I was like, maybe something happens. Maybe. Probably not. And then I saw that, and I was like, the fuck? <laughs> I'm so mad because I, I, I tweeted hashtag Marty versus Speedball, and then I was like, it would have made way more sense if it was Snow versus Speedball for the alliteration. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would have been really good for the alliteration, yeah. It's a bummer. But uh, uh, we'll, 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 keep, we'll keep tweeting it out and uh, uh, singing the praises of both of these gentlemen because, man, what a, what a, match, that, what a match Marty and, uh, <sighs> and Bailey would be. Oh, uh, I just thought of how that name could all that name also works on another level too that I just mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, good uh, one, good sir. <laughs> so uh that is all of our matches this week. We are all wrapped up. That is everything done. Uh, uh I would I would say why don't we leave you with a little preview of next week, but you all know we said it in the beginning that next week is going to be part one of our collective preview. Uh last year it was two episodes because we reviewed a ton of wrestling, and this year we are also reviewing a ton of wrestling. Yeah. So do not miss out. Uh, we are probably going to be releasing it two two episodes uh, of us uh, just reviewing a bunch of shows from the collective with a bunch of special guests from the Count Out Network. Yeah, uh, we are very excited to get all of our friends on and just talk and just geek out about an awesome weekend of wrestling, uh, yeah. which is the GCW Collective weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we uh when we post the videos, we'll we'll, we'll include timestamps too, like we did last time. That way, you if you want to find a Absolutely. certain show. It's easier because, God, it's so much wrestling. Yeah, uh, so look out for that next week. That'll be next week's episode, and probably the week after that episode as well, because like I said, it is a lot of wrestling. Mm-hmm. So we have, a, we have a lot to cover, and we want to make sure we we cover it all. We want to make sure no show gets stiff, because they all deserve they all deserve their own little time in the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's next week's preview, so that just leaves me with the plugs. Uh, go check out the rest of the Cat Out Network. Uh, as like as we said before, some of them might, will, will be appearing next week and the week after that. So watch out, watch out for people from the Cat Out Network, like Ashley and Amanda from How to Talk to Friends About Wrestling, Lauren Rosenberg from Your Dose of Death, Sean Taggart from Pure, Ryan Knightsey from Ring Post Radio, uh, and so many others uh, will be appearing, and so many other fun shows we have on the Cat Out Network. Uh, you can go check check those out over on our website, catoutpod dot com, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you could subscribe to the network, uh, give us that five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That would be amazing of you. We would really, really, really appreciate it. And if you want to support the Canon Network in another way, you can also go to our merch store, canonpod.com slash store. We have a bunch of fun t-shirts. We got an independent waters t-shirt, uh, how to talk to your friend about wrestling t-shirts. We got stickers. We got a count out, uh, we got count out, uh, hats that are going up soon. I finally got those in and I need to post them, but we have the hats in. We, they will be going on sale soon, so watch out for the watch out for those to drop uh, very soon. I cannot wait for that. Uh, we have a lot of stuff over on the, the store, so go do that. And you can also become a member of the Catout family by uh, by donating five dollars a month and uh, ju- and subscribing to the network. This this will get you exclusive content only for only for the the members who have joined. Uh, fun, uh, goofy comedy podcasts from all of you uh, that are all spoofs of all the podcasts we have here on the network. Uh, we we love doing them. They were really really fun to uh, they were really fun to, to I guess record, and I think you would really like them. So if you want those, you're gonna have to go subscribe to the Canon Network at canonpod.com slash membership. Also, go follow us on social media. We got Facebook, uh, Canon Wrestling Podcast Network. Subscribe to us on YouTube, which is the same as the Facebook. And, of course, follow us on Twitter at CountOutPod. And follow the Independent Waters Twitter over at Indie Waters. Uh, Zach, did I miss anything? Uh, the only thing I can think of that you would miss is uh, join our Discord. We have that up Yeah, and join now. our Discord, right. Of course, yeah, the, the, link, is, the link is on our Twitter. Uh, if you go there, you can hop into our, our CountOut Discord. It is open to the public. So if you want to join a little community where we all just talk about wrestling and mess around, uh, in in the comfort in a in a very comfortable space full of very fine people, hop into the cat out Discord, uh, and come join the conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, personal plugs. I, no, never. I never have a personal plug. 
Yeah, I know you don't have any personal plugs, but uh, I, I believe that's everything. I believe that's everything done. So that just leaves me with one thing left to say, and that is to remember that there's a gigantic sea of independent wrestling out there. So never stop exploring. This has been a Count Out Podcast. Hey guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Amanda Bones. And I'm Ashley. Of How to Talk to Your Friend About Wrestling, the podcast on the Count Out Wrestling Podcast Network. A weekly show where we talk about all of our favorite things. Babes, blood, and brutality. We also talk about other fun things. Like, is Kenny Omega finally too tan? And how much blood is too much blood? Because that looks like way too much blood. So join us on the adventure of teaching me, Amanda Bones, about wrestling.